Hi, and welcome back to this second video in a short series about running experiments online with OS Web. So in the previous video, you saw how we took a basic uh, lexical decision experiment and added some layer of JavaScript uh, to it to implement counterbalancing. And now we have a fully functional cool experiment and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, export that experiment in such a way that you can import it to a YATL server and then use that YATL server to uh, distribute links to participants. Okay, so on the right hand side, we have the experiment that we just created. And on the left hand side, we have uh, the YATL's test server, cortex.yatls.org. You have free access to this. You can use this for testing your online experiments. Um, but, and that is an important thing to note, this is just a test server and it will be reset at night. If you want to use YATLs, you need access to your own YATL server. So for example, your university uh, can create a YATL server for you or you can use it in one form or another. But basically you need some kind of web server that has YATLs installed so that you can post your Open Sesame experiments there, your OS web experiments. And right now I'm using the Cortex test server, uh, but you cannot use that for actually real life deployment of your experiments. Very important. Okay, um, but on the right hand side we have our experiments. So I go to tools, OS web, and then we have a bunch of options. And the option that is most important right now is the option export, export experiment as YATL study. So I click on that and then I will, up, I will put it on uh, in my downloads folder, why not? Inline JavaScript demo osx.zip so what this will do, it will create a zip file that has, of course, the experiment in it, but it also has some other things like, for example, the OS web code, etc., all bundled in a zip file that, and, and that contains all the stuff that you need to run the experiment. So it is basically sort of bundling your experiment uh, so that you can deploy it to YATLs. Okay, I save it. Up. Done, experiment successfully exported. Then I go to YATLs, to the test server. I log in, the, the test, uh, the password for, to log into the server is on the YATL's documentation side. Um, so it's not, you don't need to request a lo login or anything like that. Okay, I'll make the, make the screen bigger, zoom in a little bit. Um, then you see on the left hand side in YATL's, you see a lot of experiments um, that are posted there. These are, this, these are just populated on the, on the YATL's test server, right? If you have your own YATL server and your own account on the left hand side, you will have your own experiments that belong to you. But here, they're, they're just random experiments. And then I say import study, click. Up. And then I go to my downloads. And there I have inline JavaScript demo.osx.zip. So I click on that. And then YATLs will ask me, you're about to import a study, lexical decision, and its directory. Do you want to proceed? Yes. I say import. Then it will upload the experiment to YATLs. It goes pretty quickly now because it's a very small experiment. Sometimes it will take a little while. And then it will appear as a new experiment on the left-hand side. Up. Lexical decision. Oh, there are actually two lexical decisions in the third one because it's such a common paradigm. I think this one is probably mine. Always web experiment. Yeah. Um, just to check the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the second one is mine. All right. So you have to, um, so rookie mistake. I, I selected a name that is so generic that it is difficult to find, right? So if you have a name for your experiment, make sure that you will be able to find it back. But this is the experiment that we have. Um, <clears throat> now, how can you use YATLs now to run your experiment? There is a run button here, which is very seductive, but it's just for testing purposes, just for yourself, just for the experiment. So if I click this, it will open uh, the experiment up and I can, I can run it if I want. We go. Apple is a word, right? You know the experiment. We've seen it before. Z cancel escape. Uh, yes, cancel. And then we go back. Um, but this is not how you would distribute your your experiment uh, to the participants. This is just for you to make sure that it actually runs. So how would you ex export the experiment? Well, the first thing to note is the concept of a batch manager. A batch is just a label, you could say, or a sort of a container for data that you're going to collect, you know, for example, in one year or in one group of participants, some, some kind of label, some kind of contain, container of data that you would like to group together just for yourself. So if I click on Worker and Batch Manager, you see that there's already one batch. It's called the default batch. You can use that. You can just use the default batch and then you're essentially not really making any container. You're just putting all the data there. But just for the sake of demonstration, 
let's say that you know you on this experiment i'm going to do it many years in a row and every year i want to create a new batch for my uh, to contain the data and so that afterwards i know which data was collected when then i say new batch and i say okay this is uh you know uh, academic year 2019 2020 right and i say create okay and there we have it now i can expand it here and then you have the you have things that are called workers now this is a little bit of a tricky concept what is a worker a worker is essentially a link that has certain restrictions to it and you want to select the kind of worker that fits uh, the restrictions that you want to have for your experiment this sounds pretty abstract but for for example for the yatos worker it is very obvious what the restriction is you need to be logged in to yatos as a researcher to be able to run that and then you can do it as often as you want for the personal single worker it is one link that one person can start and then that's it then the link expires so it's very restricted a personal multiple worker um, um, is running an experiment multiple times um, but each individual can do it only uh, no sorry giving a, a link to a participant i think each link can be personalized with comments yeah is giving a link to a participant and that participant can start that link multiple times um, but not multiple but, but participants cannot multiple participants cannot use the same link then we have the general single worker um, this means this is kind of the converse of the personal multiple worker it means that a lot of different participants can use that link but they can use it only once i don't i've never actually used that and then we have the general multiple worker and that is the least restricted it is basically a link and everyone can do it as often as they want now depending on the needs of your situation um, you you want to choose one link or another but it's an important choice right for example when i run when in introduction to psychology the course that i i teach I often ask participants to participate in the experiment and experiments and then I use the general multiple worker I, I enable it like this up like this and then I say get link I get a link and I just post that and I give it to the participants and then without any restrictions the participant the students can do it or not etc and I get a whole bunch of data but it is pretty unstructured um, if you want to be very uh, you want to basically do it do your online study like a lab study as we are doing now actually then you can use a personal single worker you can say okay get link and then you can say okay every participant gets one link and you tell them okay run that run that i will i will be able to see if you finished it you have to run it in one go because otherwise it expires etc so it is very limited it's restricted um, the downside of that of course the the upside is that you have a lot of control and you have a lot of insight into who is doing what and when the downside is that participants tend to actually to click on the link and then it expires and then they will ask for a new link and it takes more work etc right so you 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 have more control but it's also a little bit more work um so but basically that's how it works right so you say okay this is participant one maybe huh? or what, let's say uh session one you know and i want to have i want to test five participants in this session session one so get all right, and then I get five links that I can distribute to my five participants. And for each participant, what will, what will be the case is that they can run the experiment once, the data will be stored, etc., etc. Okay, close. All right, so now I hope that you have some idea of how you can actually import your experiment from Open Sesame into YATLS, and then how you can, in YATLS, um, get a link that you can give to your participant. And it's important to be aware of the concept of a worker in YATLS, which is also explained on the YATLS documentation, because that determines the rules essentially of the game and the restrictions on how often participants can do the experiment, who can do the experiment, etc. Another important thing, and I repeat it, I already said it, is that you need a YATLS server for yourself. So your, your institution or someone needs to provide a YATLS server and, a, and an account to you. And what I did here for this demonstration video is use cortex.yatos.org, which is a test server that you cannot use for actual real-life deployment of experiments. All right, thank you very much. In the next video, I will briefly show how you can actually download data from Yatos and import it into OpenSesame. Thank you very much for your attention.